Linda's Pantry and today I'm excited to bring you along for canning my enchilada sauce that I made for you on camera in the last video and by popular demand you guys want to see me can it. <laughs> so I've got my canning jars in the sink and this is the batch I made yesterday and this is the batch I made the day before. All from the same chili so the profile is going to be almost identical. So I've let these jars and this uh, measuring cup come uh, sit out on the counter for a couple hours. I'm going to put this in my 6.2 quart um, saucepan and heat this back up. And I'm probably going to add a little water because I don't want to lose any of that. And I'll show you how I do it in just a second. So. We're doing one and a half pint jars. I've got my lids in rings. My lids are on the stove simmering, just in simmering water. Um, I don't get too crazy about that. Did you want to come in close and then I can show you how I do the jars to clean the jars and the measuring cup out. And then you can see how beautiful this sauce is. I'm telling you, I could eat this on anything. It is so, so good. I'm not going to worry so much about um, what's left in the measuring in the measuring cup. We'll, we'll live with that. Okay. Let's bring it in okay. So in this jar, I just put maybe uh, a quarter of a cup, maybe not even that, of water, and we're going to get that lid back on. And give it a good shake. Right and it'll clean my jar out. And now I'm just gonna pour it into the other jar right here and do the same thing. And then we're not missing any of that. And then our jars are ready to be rinsed out completely and run through the dishwasher. So there you go. And I don't lose out on any of this sauce. I don't wanna, I don't wanna lose any of it. It's so delicious. So I'm gonna get this on the stove, get it back up to a simmer and we're gonna load our jars. It's gonna be so fast and easy. Um, you're gonna be shocked. Super easy. So you can do this on a weekend. Okay night. guys, I have my jars out of the sink. They're still nice and hot. And you know, you're just tempering your jars basically. So I'm gonna get my spoon out of here. Can you see how the steam coming off of that? Ooh, it's hot, baby. Yes, and the handles are hot, but that's all right. Okay, so now we're ready to load our jars, and I've got my paper towel that I'm going to dip in my water over here with my um, lids that have hot water on them, and we're going to go ahead, turn my pan a little bit, and we're going to load this jar. It couldn't be easier. So my um, 10.5 pressure canner will hold five of these jars comfortably and I'm going to leave an inch of headspace. We're going to let that canner, once we get these in the canner, we're going to let that canner come up to pressure and that might have a little bit, no, nope, that's an inch of headspace for sure. And if you're not sure, you can take this little measuring wand and if you put that on the edge, it should barely touch the top, which is exactly, it barely touched the top. So I'm gonna wipe the rim, and you're really wiping the rim for any excess. You don't have to worry about the threads, but I am just because I'm, and then I always give a little feel for what might be going on there, if there's any cracks or anything. Um, we'll grab us a lid. And we're going to put, ooh, very hot, we're going to put a ring on. And the ring is basically to hold the lid in place during the canning process. Now, fingertip tight. So I did get it all over the side of the jar in there. Of course, if you're using red sauce, you're going to make a mess. So this is going in the canner, but look how beautiful that's going to look on the shelf. Okay, this is going in the canner. Once I vented that, I have vented that for 10 minutes. I'm going to then pull, um, then I'm going to put my weight on. And for my altitude, I'm at 242 feet above sea level. So I need a 10 pound weight and 11 pounds on the dial gauge. 
and I'm gonna let that process, once it starts jiggling and dancing, I'll start the timing. It will process for one hour. All right, let's do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if these were pint jars, you'd go for 50 minutes. Okay guys, our canner has come down off of pressure and I actually undo the thumb screws and tweak the lid up so it supports up off um, and let some of the steam out for about 10 minutes. We've got jars popping. Let this canner, you know, let everything come down slowly. You'll get less evacuation if your temperature is regulated slowly up and down. So even when you're heating it up or you're, you're adjusting your um, temperature on the stove, um, you wanna make sure that you do that. Don't tip your jars. Uh, in fact, there's no water on top of my jars right now because it's already evaporated. And this looks fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. And these rings are loose. They usually loosen up. My water is just as clear as clear can be, and that's what you want. I'm gonna end up with the correct amount of headspace. Now, right now, everything in the jar is expanded, so you're gonna have above your one inch headspace. By tomorrow morning, everything will have you know calmed down and you'll get the true headspace, which still should be one inch. I, I'm gonna bring you over and show you the water because Usually, when you do tomato or any kind of a chili type recipe, you're gonna have something in there. But I've gotten to the point where I'm patient enough to, and, and, and regulating my stove slowly up and down, that I know I'm gonna get less evacuation out of the jars. So anyway, it's just a learning process as you go along, but it's beautiful absolutely beautiful mm. and I'm gonna bring you in close to see the inside of that canner and to see these jars because they're beautiful guys if this inspires you and I hope it does I hope it inspires you to say I'm gonna start pressure canning my own enchilada sauce for less money than it cost and it tastes 10 times better your family will love it it's on your shelf it's shelf stable it's there when you need it and you don't have to worry about it let's say you have leftover chicken that you you know you roast it off and you want to make chicken enchiladas you don't have to worry that you don't have that in your pantry because there it is all right and even though it's just me I, this is enough for me for the next oh, well five batches of enchiladas so i i'm good to go and because i'm small batch canning for one or two um i get to can again very very soon and i know you guys like these videos so i want to come back and do some more for you i think i need to can up some split pea and ham here pretty quick i don't know let me know in the comment section what you'd like to see me can next and in a small batch canning session not a huge giant batch of anything and um i'll let you know what i think all right guys come over here and look at this water come on and i i honestly I, look how clear that is that is just as clear as it can be that's perfect. That's exactly what you want to see in your canner. And it doesn't always happen that way, but look at how pretty. Yeah, these look way darker because of how dark it is in here. But, oh, there's a true color. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Don't forget, check the links below. I've got a link for that canner in the description box where you can go get yours. That's a 10.5 All-American Pressure Canner. It is my absolute favorite.